morning, seniors. I apologize for this getting to you a little late. I'm having some issues with YouTube. It's not processing videos today for me, apparently. And uh, I'm just, it lost this one. So um, I'm trying to redo it and get it to you guys. So we're going to just look at hard times to start with today. I've got my textbook here. So apologies for having to look down. And um, let me give you a little bit of background on this book. First of all, Charles Dickens was... I, don't, I think your class didn't read it, but used to be most of my students had one interaction with Charles Dickens before uh, my class, and that would have been in ninth grade. Miss Greeno had him read Great Expectations, and almost to a person, they always hated it. Uh, no one ever liked it. Uh, it was difficult. They hated the story. They hated learning about it. They all failed the test, and no one wanted to discuss it. So I've usually skipped over this section. But in the past few years, Miss Green has kind of dropped great expectations off. And so a lot of people have zero interaction with Charles Dickens. Um, if you went to the lower campus and you read uh, the Christmas Christmas Carol uh, that with, you know, the three ghosts and all that's Dickens. So you may have a little bit, <clears throat> but that's easy. Charles Dickens, his actual stuff is a little bit more complex, a little bit more difficult. And so. Your textbook had an excerpt from his his book, Hard Times, which is a critique of the education system in 1800s London. Um, it was it's a very good, uh, good book. It, I, I don't dislike Charles Dickens. I do find his work a little bit difficult and a little bit inaccessible at times. But Hard Times is about education, which is something very close to my heart. So I really enjoyed it. And it also attacks the things about education that I don't like. So it kind of fits my way of viewing things. So. Of course, I want to teach it, right? Um, so one of the things we want to look at right as you begin the chapter one excerpt is the famous part of this story, which is about facts. Uh, it says, now what I want is facts. Teach these boys and girls nothing but facts. Facts alone are wanted in life. Plant nothing else and root out everything else. You can only form in the minds of reasoning animals upon facts. Nothing else will ever be of any service to them. This is the principle on which I bring up my own children. And this is the principle on which I bring up these children. Stick to facts, sir. So what basically, and this is the headmaster of this school, a guy named Thomas Graygrind, which we're going to talk later, that Dickens makes his characters have names that fit their personalities. So this guy's saying that the importance is teaching facts and facts alone. And this is a system that is not unheard of still today in 2020, all right? Think about schools that are built, especially public schools, which are built around standardized testing. Um, the entire year is built around these tests, and that is memorizing facts. Um and memorizing facts is an essential part of education, okay? I'm not going to say it's not. But especially the level we're at now, it's not the most important thing. Um, because, you know, it's it, that's useless trivia at that point. I mean, you know, if your job is going to be that you're going to make millions on Jeopardy, then memorizing facts might work. But, um, I mean, for the rest of us, there's, there's more to life than learning facts. There's more to education than learning facts. And to enjoying life, facts aren't, aren't enjoyable, they're just not. You need other elements to make you a complete person. But Mr. Grade Grind here's idea was to cut out everything else. He felt like it was wasteful. The rest of that chapter one thing uh, is more about focusing on just facts or the most important part, not just in education, but life in general. And he believes that that is what matters. Now, Dickens attacked, despite Dickens being an intellectual, he frequently would attack intellectuals in his works. They, they often came off as pretentious and completely wrong about life. Mr. Gradgrind mentions teaching his kids that way. And a lot of this book, Hard Time, shows you that how his children do not turn out OK. They turn out very problem, uh, very disturbed because of his obsession with just teaching people hard, cold logic and facts with nothing else involved, right? I mean, we need more than that. So, okay, the rest of the excerpt is just chapter two. And chapter two kind of focuses on a couple of really key elements. Um, we meet a second uh, teacher, a guy named <laughs> Chokum Child. <laughs> I mean, what a terrible name. But again, no one in real life would have that name. But Dickens loves to give names to characters that indirectly characterize them. Uh, that's one of his key uh, techniques, one of his author styles. So and it works. It's really strong in this novel. Um, so he he mentions in the actual book, Sissy Jupe, Cecilia Jupe, or girl number 20, as she's referred to by Mr. Greygrind, is uh, another pretty important character in the book. And they uh, they only call her girl number 20 because, again, that leans to their factual standing. You know, you are the seat you sit in. You're not an individual person. Um, and that's that's a problem. I mean, you think about how prisons treat people as a number and 
how schools and oftentimes treat people as a number, maybe not as literally, but that's a problem for sure, because we're individuals and we each have our gifts and we each have our deficiencies and learning to do, to praise those gifts and to bolster those deficiencies is really a key element to us becoming good people and looking for the strengths in others and playing to that. You know, it's what good managers do. Managers know, okay, this person is great at this. So we're going to put them in a position to succeed there. This person's bad at this. We're going to try to keep them away from that. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a lot, it's just something that lacks in management today. Okay. So, uh, in major ways, that's why they never use their employees per, uh, properly. So, uh, so let's look at this part. It says girl number 20 said, Mr. Grade grind squarely pointing with this square forefinger. I don't know that girl. Who is that girl? Sissy Jupe, sir, explained girl number 20 blushing and standing up and curtsying. Sissy's not a name, said Mr. Grade grind. Don't call yourself Sissy. Call yourself Cecilia. It's father who calls me sissy, sir, returned the girl in a trembling voice and with another curtsy. Then he has no business to do it, said Mr. Gregorine. Tell him he mustn't. Cecilia Jupe, let me see. What is your father? So right away, he even attacks the casualness of her name and wants her to go by like her given name. There's no room for nicknames or anything like that. He asks her really kind of an interesting question. They find, I mean, through the discussion, she finds out, he finds out her dad works with horses and stuff. And he asks her to basically tell him what a horse is, which is, you know, even if I asked you guys to define a horse for me, that's a really hard thing to define. I mean, we all know what a horse is. We have seen pictures of them. You know, it's an animal, a real pretty animal that you go out and ride. Some of you do. I'm scared of riding horses, but uh, things like that. Um, she doesn't really know how to answer it. And his response is girl number 20, unable to define a horse. Girl number 20, possessed of no facts in reference to one of the commonest of animals. And if it's one of the commonest of animals, why do you need to define it? It doesn't need a definition. Everything does not need to be, need to be reduced to a definition. And that's one of the things um, that, that really this book is, and then the excerpt particularly is really hammering, okay? Um, he goes to another boy, a boy named Bitzer, and asks him to define. Listen to how he defines a horse. Quadruped, gramnivorous, 40 teeth, namely 24 grinders, 4 eye teeth, and 12 incisive. Sheds coats in the spring in marshy countries, sheds hoofs too. Hoofs hard but requiring to be shod with iron. Age known by marks and mouth. So that's his definition of a horse. Wow, that sounds boring. You know, nothing says I want to go and uh, ride a horse or spend time with horses by except hearing the word gramnivorous. Um, so, yeah, he knows the facts that go with a horse, but that doesn't mean he can ride one. It doesn't mean he appreciates one. All of that. It's one of the problems with education today, the idea that we're just going to memorize a bunch of facts and we're going to memorize a bunch of formulas and we're never going to learn to appreciate this stuff or to see a purpose in it. I think it's one of the big problems with math instruction in many places. It's here's a bunch of problems. Here's a bunch of formulas. Here's how you answer the problems. But at no point is there any appreciation for why we need to know this. You know, you always got you guys always ask that. Why are we ever going to need to know the algebra or geometry or calculus? And if you could spend more time going over why these things are important and saying, here's where people use them in the real world. Here's where geometry makes a difference. You know, I, I'm an amateur carpenter. I work on building furniture and stuff in the side. And I use geometry constantly because, you know, um, I was doing uh, my old kitchen table that I built. Um, it had cross pieces that were at angles. And I used geometry because the actual – and I didn't have a plan. I had a picture. But the initial picture, when I looked at kind of how it was measured out, it was an eight-foot table. We needed to shrink it to six. We needed to change the angle of the boards because of that. And I used geometry for that. You know, learning things like that makes it a lot more valuable than just here's a, a formula for an angle. Why would we ever need that? And, you know, I think that's one of the things like with, with their definition of a horse. Yeah, it's great that you know how many teeth a horse has, but that's never going to help you appreciate it. And it's not it's not useful. It, it really isn't. Um, again, like I said, unless you're on a quiz show, no one's ever going to want to know. Nothing's going to ever depend on how many teeth a horse has, unless you want to be a horse dentist, if, if that's a thing. So. You know, facts at the end of the day don't serve much purpose beyond, you know, base knowledge, but then you have to go farther than that. And that's where our education system is still falling down daily. You know, we want to memorize a bunch of stuff so you can pass um, a standardized test or do really well on the ACT so we can get you into college and you can learn a bunch more facts. So then you, excuse me, can get a, a piece of paper that allows you to get a job where most of that stuff you learned will be of no use. You know, and it doesn't everything you learn in school doesn't have to be something that you're going to use on a day to day basis. I mean, a lot of what school should be about is about finding your strengths and bringing those out and developing those strengths and making you more successful in the future in whatever job you choose and in whatever part of life you choose. You know, not I had some 10th graders write some really disheartening comments this week 
about schools, about getting, you know, getting you prepared to get a job. And it's not a place to learn about, you know, things like, uh, you know, how to be a better person and stuff like that. And they're like, my parents are there to teach me that. Well, no offense. A lot of people have parents that are not good at teaching that. And a lot of parents don't even try. They're too busy with their own stuff to even sit down with kids and teach them that. So, you know, education should be more than facts and just memorization. It should be about training the whole person and finding your strengths and helping you supplement your deficiencies. And Mr. Gradegrind and Mr. Chokum Child here, neither of them understand that. Now, Mr. Gradegrind is going to learn it throughout the book, which we don't have here. But I strongly encourage you to read it if you really want. It's a little bit of a, a grind. It's not a long book, but it is it is a little bit tough at times. All right. Um Continuing on, we get a little bit more here. Uh, they kind of talk about why you shouldn't have like certain types of wallpaper because, you know, if you have wallpaper with flowers on it, well, flowers don't grow on a wall, wall. So why would you ever want that? And stuff like that, which when we're looking at that, that seems like an absurd argument. But to people like that, it makes perfect sense. Um, they're like, you know, this isn't real. This isn't how things work. So why would you want it that way? And the fact is that most of us don't want that. I don't want things to be real. Uh, reality is harsh enough. I'd like to have escape. Uh, and they don't want you to have that. They want everything to be built around facts. Um, uh, Sissy Jupe's kind of an interesting character. Uh, it said, so you would carpet your room or your husband's room if you were a grown woman and have a, had a husband with representation of flowers. Would you, said the gentleman? Why would you? He's like, why would you put down a carpet that has like looks like flowers on it? And her response is, if you please, sir, I'm very fond of flowers. And just her sim the simplicity of her answer is that I just like it is – everything that's right about education, in my opinion, because she's like, you know, I don't know. It's just something I enjoy and I want to do it because I like it. And, uh, you know, life isn't just about facts and the, you know, realism of it. There's so much more to it. There's this, there's this level of life that we should enjoy. You know, um, I have a treadmill in the back. It makes more sense for me to use my treadmill than to go out and walk, especially once it gets in the summer. Um, you guys be proud of me. I've walked about two hours a day total uh, at one time um, the last few days, and I've actually gotten to enjoy it because, you know, my favorite my favorite thing is to listen to music. So I'm like, I can listen to music and do something productive, too. So I've been out doing that, and it would make more sense to use my treadmill on the back because it's air conditioned in here. It's a lot healthier for me. Um, if the kids need something, I'm right here. Instead of me wandering the neighborhood like I've been doing, it's safer in a lot of ways. But I like being outside and I like the walking. So it's not about what makes sense and what's logical sometimes. Sometimes it's about just life is not meant to just be all logic. It's meant to be enjoyed. And, uh, you know, I enjoy being outside right now. It helps m elevate my mood, which is not great on a general basis. This is uh, Keller pointed out that. Of all the teachers, I was going to hate this online thing the most, and not because I'm bad with the technology. I can do that all day, but I do. I hate this, this being by myself with just my children all day, and then my wife comes home and tells me about all of her nursing stuff that I don't understand and don't care to understand, and uh, it just makes it where I miss out on the thing that helped me enjoy my life. I don't have it right now, so that I can have. So sometimes it's, life's just about enjoying things. It's not about knowing the facts of it. I don't need to know how walking works. I don't need to know why uh, the sun is up to enjoy it when I'm out there, that sort of thing. Um, so they go back to the fact, fact, fact thing. He says, fact, fact, fact to the gentleman. Fact, 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 repeated Thomas Gravegrind. You are to be in all things regulated and governed, said the gentleman, by fact. We hope to have before long a board of fact composed of commissioners of fact who will force the people to be a people of fact and of nothing but fact. You must discard the word fancy altogether. You have nothing to do with it. You are not to have in any object or use or ornament what would be con a contradiction in fact. Now there by fancy, they don't mean like uh, the way we see the word fancy, like something really uh, flowery and special. By fancy, I mean, they mean enjoy. We're going to get rid of everything that you like for no reason. Everything should be governed by facts. And the theory here was that if we did that, we could eliminate a lot of the problems in the world because a lot of our issues come from want and desire. And if you can eliminate eliminate those things, sorry, and just focus on facts and what's needed, then you could correct a lot of the ills in the world. It's a stupid argument, to be honest with you, and it robs the joy of life, to be honest with you. Um, and we don't want to do that. Uh, anyway, so just – that kind of closes this section out. I mean, I'm, I have some very like basic questions for this. There's five of them total that I want you guys to look at, but um, you need to make sure you go over all of that. Uh, read it, answer those questions. 
Um, I hope you kind of enjoyed the discussion here. I really just did this video because I wanted to be able to talk about uh, the importance of enjoying life, not just facts. I mean, our education system is broken. Um, it needs to be scrapped and started over, to be honest with you. But at this point, it is what it is. and No one's going to listen to me. So maybe you guys will do better. So we're going to uh, I'm, I'm going to close the video here. You guys will have um, the other video for the story, an upheaval, uh, which is your other one. I will post that Wednesday. All right. Now, if you want to go ahead and work on it, you can. Um, I would advise you to go back and look at the video because it's just helpful to have that information in general. But um, and also just because I'm I'm like to know you guys are watching these. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was somewhat helpful. I hope that reading wasn't too bad for you. All right. Uh, good luck with the questions. If you have any questions with about the questions, please let me know. Okay. You guys have a great afternoon, evening, morning, where whenever you're watching this. Okay. Talk to you guys later.